The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. What is the Melba Story? What sort of a woman was our most famous Australian? Ask those who've lived in her time and they'll give you many different answers. She was the most wonderful woman this country has ever known. She was vain and selfish. Oscar Hammerstein said she had a heart of gold. Beverly Nichols' book, Evensong, gave us the real Melba. Ask the doorkeeper at Covent Garden. He'll tell you how good she was. She said sing a muck. She drank too much. She took drugs. She wouldn't pay her debts. She was a fine woman, a good mother, and a magnificent artist. All this they said, and more. They told her story, as they saw it, in newspaper and magazine articles, on the films, and on American television. They named a racehorse after her, a famous suite, a perfume, a hundred things. There were exaggerations, there were understatements, there were inaccuracies, there were lies. And so, in this program, The Melba Story, we propose to tell the story of Melba as she really was. Not only a great artist, but a very human person. We begin the Melba story in the year 1882, in the artist's room of a suburban town hall in Victoria, Australia. In the room are only two people, Melba herself, known at this stage of her life as Helen Porter Mitchell, and her father David Mitchell, who at the moment is in a towering rage. You'll not sing tonight, Nelly. I shall. Do you defy me, lass? Yes, father, I do. You're going out on that platform dressed like that in front of all those people. And you're going to put on a show like a, a, a performing monkey. I'm not going to be in the least like a performing monkey, Father. I'm going to sing the Carnival of Venice. I don't care what you call it, Nelly. But it's something no decent woman to do. And what about Jenny Lind? I don't know the woman. She earned her living as a singer and was received by the Queen. Then all I can say is that Her Majesty should have had more sense. A most appreciative audience. You sang very well, Mrs. Simpson. Thank you very much, old man. Of course, your accompaniment helped me considerably. Very good of you to say, sir. You ready now, Miss Mitchell? You're on next, you know. Yes, I'm ready. Nelly. It's no use, Father. I have to do it. Oh, beg pardon? It's all right. I was speaking to my father. Shall we go up now? Uh, is this the music? Yes, thank you. Oh, come along, then. Good luck, my dear. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Your daughter hasn't done much public singing, has she, sir? She'll be doing less in future. Oh, sorry I mentioned it, I'm sure. Uh, this way, Miss Mitchell. Thank you. Ready? <coughs> yes.
That's a very good point. Thank you. you should go far. About as far as Burnley. Beg pardon? Nothing. It's just a joke. That's where I live. Congratulations, my dear. It sounded splendid from here. Thank you very much, Mr. Simpson. What did you think, Father? Here's your coat. My coat? You'll have to give them an encore, Miss Mitchell. Oh, yes. Listen to that. Not another note. There's been enough singing for one night. But, Father... I've the carriage outside, lass. Are you coming? Well, I, I... Are you coming? I suppose so. Well, come along, then. I'll have a word to your mother about this. Are you asleep, child? No, Mother. You mustn't be unhappy, Nelly. How can I help but be unhappy after tonight? Was it so very bad? I sang well, Mother. I, I really did. But Father took all the joy out of it. He's an obstinate man. But he doesn't mean half he says, you know. He means this. He says he'll never let me become a singer. A professional singer, I mean. And how am I going to do it without his help? Don't give up, child. You'll win your battle in the end, I'm sure of it. Will you stand by me, Mother? Will you? Yes, my darling. But even if I'm not here, don't despair. Not here? What do you mean? I haven't been very well lately, you know. The doctor says I have to be careful. Oh, Mother, don't talk like that. Please don't. Don't worry, child. But just remember this. Whatever happens, I'll be with you. Mother, can you hear me? Yes, child. Are you feeling any pain? No, I, I'm all right, but it's rather an effort. Oh, then don't say anything, Mother. Just lie there and rest. And let me look at you. Nearly. There are things we have to talk about, you and I. What things, Mother? There are great days coming for you, my child. Great days. You mean as a singer? Yes. You'll be all right. But you must never give up. Promise me you'll never give up, Nellie. That's a promise I can make quite easily. And I do make it. I promise that no matter what obstacles and difficulties I have to face, I'll still have faith in myself. That's right. That's what I wanted you to say. Now I can sleep in peace. Good night, Mother Darling. Good night, my child. God bless you. Nellie, where are you? In here, Father. Yeah. What are you doing, lass, sitting all by yourself in the dark? Just thinking. Now listen to me. You must get all these morbid fancies out of your head. It doesn't do any good to brood over things. I wasn't brooding, Father. But uh, you were thinking about your mother, weren't you? Yes. Uh, she had a happy life, you know. She had everything I could give her. We understood each other, your mother and I. I'm sure she understood you, Father. You mean that all the understanding was on one side? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. But Mother was very wise, you know. She could think ahead. That's quite a gift, Father. I sometimes feel that I could be the same. Well, can you think ahead sufficiently to know what's going to happen to you next week? You're going to take me away for a holiday, I suppose. <laughs> Upon my word, Nellie, I believe you do have the seeing eye. How could you possibly know that? Oh, I've noticed one or two things. A uh, change of atmosphere. That's what you need. How would you like to go to Queensland? Queensland? Do they have music up there? Music? That's the only thing left for me now. I thought you'd got those foolish notions out of your head by this time. I don't think they're foolish notions, Father. Well, I do. And if you're to come away with me, I want no talk of music, do you hear? You 
really mean that, Father? I, I do mean it. I'll take you to Queensland on that one condition. So I have to decide? No? No. Just a moment, Father. Just give me a minute. Let me think. You must never give up, Lily. Promise me you'll never give up. No. I never will. What was that, Nellie? What did you say? I won't accept your condition, Father. What's that? If I go to Queensland with you, I want to be able to sing when I like, and as often as I like. I haven't changed my ideas in any way at all, Father. I'm going to be a singer, and I'd like your help. But whether I get it or not, I'm still going on. In just a moment, we'll resume the Melba story. The Melba Story. So, you defy me, Nelly. You won't give up your singing. I haven't changed my ideas in any way at all, Father. I'm going to be a singer, and I'd like your help. But I'm going on whether I get your help or not. You refuse to do as I ask? I simply refuse to accept the unfair conditions you're making. I've never been unfair in my life. All right, Father. Here's a test for you. Will you take me to Queensland without making any condition? I wasn't wrong about that, Nellie. I'll never admit that I was wrong. I don't want you to admit anything. All I'm asking you to do is give me my own way about this. And about everything else, I suppose. I'm not interested in anything else. Uh, well, it can do no harm, I suppose. After all, you won't get a chance to do any singing at Government House. Government House? We're going to be the guests of His Excellency, Sir Arthur Kennedy. So, you're a musician, my dear. I'm not sure about that yet, Your Excellency. But I do sing. <laughs> That's a good answer, eh, Miss Ah, yes, she's always been pretty good at that. Answering back, my father means, sir. <laughs> I like a girl with spirit. And uh, I was just thinking, I'd like to organize a charity concert. Would you be good enough to help me, my dear? Oh, I'd love to, sir. You'd have no objections, Mitchell. Uh, as long as it's for charity, Your Excellency. Uh, my father only minds my singing, sir, when I'm being paid for it. <laughs> no fear of that on this occasion, I assure you. But um, if you'd like to see something really professional, I'll take you to the agricultural show. Ah, that's more like it. But, my dear Mitchell, there are some very high-class professional performers there, believe me. Hmm? Singers? No, rough riders. <laughs> oh, there's usually a pound off it a man who can stay on a buck jumper's back for 20 seconds. And you should see the way they rush it. 20 seconds? Well, that isn't very long. It's long enough when you're on the back of a bucking demon. However, you shall see for yourself when we attend the show tomorrow. Twenty seconds can seem like eternity at a time like that. Yes, sir, I quite agree. But isn't it dangerous trying to ride such a horse? Yes, indeed. And many a man has broken his neck in the attempt. But they still try it, my dear, and I suppose they always will. Uh, a couple of minutes next. One pound to the man who can stay off this horse's back for 20 seconds. Any more? I'll try it. Come oh. on, let's oh. oh. But you can get rid of your top hat first. <laughs> Father, who's this? Uh, who's what, Nelly? The man who's just come into the arena. The one who's going to try to ride the buck jump. <laughs> well, he's a bit of a dandy, whoever he is. <laughs> Look at him. Top hat, gloves and stick. <laughs> He's out of place among that crowd. Here you fellows. Look after these things for me, will you? Right you are, mister. Uh, we'll take care of them. You won't be needing them where you're going anyway. No. <laughs> they don't wear that sort of gloves in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> or in the cemetery either. <laughs> right, mister? Yes, sir. Give me a leg up, please. Oh, Father, I can't look. Well, come away, then. No, I think I'll stay. 
Armstrong's boy. You his father in Ireland. And what's the young fellow doing out here? Managing a sugar plantation, I believe. The horse is as quiet as a lamb now. Bravo! Bravo! Really, really everyone's looking at you, including young Armstrong himself, and I don't blame you. Well, there you are, mister. There's your pound. Ah, thank you. Uh, here you chaps, share it up between you and drink my health. Oh, oh good on you, chum. Well, we'll do that, mate. We'll drink your health with pleasure. Go on. What did you say his name was, sir? Uh, Charles Armstrong. Uh, just a moment, I'll send... Oh, no! Captain Lindsay. Yes, sir? Uh, bring young Armstrong over here, will you? Very good, sir. I'd like you to meet him in any case, Miss Mitchell. Oh, yes, sir. Very good of you. Very good, sir. Why, Nelly, what's the matter with you? Nothing, father. No, nothing at all. Uh, my respects to you, sir. And my congratulations to you, young man. You did very well. Oh, it was nothing, sir. I, I'm used to horses. Well, uh, here's a young lady who thought you were wonderful. Uh, Miss Mitchell, may I present Mr. Charles Armstrong? How do you do? My father, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, I believe you're running a sugar plantation, Armstrong. Yes, sir, in Port Mackay. Is that far from here? Oh, a fair distance, Miss Mitchell. Aren't you a Queenslander? No, I'm from Victoria. You'd better come along to Government House next week and hear her sing. She's as good at singing as you are at riding. I'd like to come along and hear her, sir. In fact, I am coming. Thank you very much. And now, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mitchell will sing for an encore that old favourite, Danny Boy. Oh, <laughs> 
really beautiful. Why, Mr. Armstrong, what are you doing here? Waiting for you, Miss Mitchell. Why? Because I wanted to talk to you. I, I really should be going back no, to the wait. office. No, wait. There's no hurry, is there? Yes, they'll be wondering where I am. Well, let them wonder. You're very masterful, aren't you, Mr. Armstrong? Am I? I'm not sure that I like it. You like getting your own way, too, don't you? Sometimes. I wonder how we'd hit it off together. Why, Mr. Armstrong... Father, Charles has something to say to you. Uh, well, I have the honor, sir, to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. I see. And how does my daughter feel about this? I, I... Hmm, no need to ask. But tell me, young man, uh, where do you propose to make a home for Nellie? Why, sir, at Port Mackay. And you, Nellie, would you be prepared to go and live in a place like that? Yes, father. As long as Charles is there. But wait a moment. What about your singing? My singing? Yeah, I understood you'd made up your mind to become a professional singer. Oh, that. It's all forgotten now, father. I'm going to settle down with Charles at Port Mackay. And I don't care if I never sing another note of music as long as I live. The girl, Helen Mitchell, who was later to become the world's greatest singer, is now prepared to give up all her dreams of glory and become just another suburban housewife. We know, of course, that she changed her mind. But for that, we must wait for the next chapter of The Melba Story. The Melba Story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Patricia Kennedy and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano, Glenda Raymond. <laughs>